Meditate on the principles of compassion, openness, acceptance, and presence in the here and now. What I'd like to do today is more of a meditation than a pure mindfulness session. I will simultaneously introduce the loose structure of these sessions, the underpinnings of mindfulness, and the techniques that are useful for it. At this time, I ask you all to find a comfortable position wherever you may be. That might mean closing the blinds, turning down the lights, resting your feet flat on the floor, placing your hands on your thighs, or simply sitting on the ground. Make your space as comfortable as possible and make it yours. Now close your eyes or employ a soft gaze. Let your spine stay straight and tall while your shoulders drop and relax. Take a moment to focus on your breathing in and out. It is not necessary to evaluate your breathing at this time. Simply acknowledge it. Notice the rise and fall in your belly. Continue to focus on your breathing and allow my words to enter into your experience again without offering judgment. Throughout this session, I will pause and give you all an opportunity to focus on your breathing and your other embodied experiences without interruption. Continue to breathe deeply in a manner that engages your belly. What is your body telling you in this moment? As modern humans, we often believe that we exist behind our eyes as entities within our minds. This, however, is a mistake when we consider our anatomy and our experiences. Our bodies are innervated. Our nerves receive messages from the brain, but they also send information to the brain. The process is not strictly top-down or bottom-up, it is dynamic. Emotional experiences like pain and suffering suggest that our realities are more than mere cognitive abstractions. Even if we manage to deny suffering with our powerful cognition, it will likely manifest in other ways, such as through damaged interpersonal relationships or psychophysiological distress. With mindfulness meditation, we are attempting to balance the scales by attending to our embodied experience. We will remember that to deny aspects of our experience is to deny aspects of ourselves. Our society's tendency to elevate the roles of cognitive abstraction deconstruction, representation, or more aptly, representation, isolation, generalization, narrowly focused attention, and rationality leads to other problems. These are all facets of the brain's left hemisphere and the right hemisphere, which is often a target of psychotherapy, is thereby neglected. Bear in mind that the relationship between these hemispheres 
is a far cry from the one presented in online articles. In both hemispheres are involved in both cognitive, most cognitive processes. Nonetheless, the right hemisphere offers context to abstractions. It serves as an experiential comparator for deconstructed systems, fuels presence as opposed to represence, emphasizes life's uniqueness, affords feelings of betweenness, supplies broad attention, and allows for reason, the contextualized, meaningful form of rationality. Further, language is limiting as many experiences cannot be expressed. Language expression is the left hemisphere specialty, while both hemispheres receive language. This makes the silent reflection of mindfulness meditation especially potent. The left hemisphere is a somewhat closed system that revels in its knowledge and order and excludes contradictory information. Whereas the right hemisphere is more open and sees life as a transformational process. It has been said that the left hemisphere knows but does not believe and the right hemisphere believes but does not know. Tragically, however, the left hemisphere doesn't know what it doesn't know, and the right hemisphere knows what it doesn't know. Therefore, both viewpoints are necessary. In these sessions, we will strive to integrate the hemispheres while understanding that they both serve unique and useful purposes. We will attempt to carry out the difficult task of keeping them distinct while also helping them communicate. To allow the left brain to take over would be to mistake the map for the real world. Mindfulness can be a way to understand oneself better and accept the totality of one's experience. It gives us an opportunity to shed light on what was not known, have compassion for what was known, but ignored and neglected, and integrate parts of ourselves that have become disconnected and even contradictory. Throughout these sessions, I challenge you all to focus on your personal experience and truly experience it in the here and now. This is the time to live in the warm, embodied, contextualized, and unique how of existence, rather than the cold, disembodied, abstracted, and generalized what of experience that our society often demands of us. We focus on these aspects of experience, not because they are all there is to life, but because they are often neglected. Our society has largely become biased towards the left hemisphere's way of attending to the world. But we remember that to neglect facets of our experience is to neglect facets of ourselves. How can you carry these tenets into your weekly activities? What insight, if any, have you gained that might help you feel connected and integrated in accordance with your authentic and potential selves.
How can you be present when life is so hectic? Take a moment to reflect on your experiences in the here and now. When you are ready, slowly bring yourself back to the group by opening your eyes or hardening your gaze. Thank you all for your time. Mariah is providing a feedback survey in the chat box. If you wouldn't mind filling that out as we close today. Thank you.